Aloha champions! Today is Wednesday, April 15th, 2020. Today's lesson will be a geology le lesson on violent Vesuvius. Your objective and what you'll need to do to turn in for today's activity is scholars will write a one to two paragraph short story of what they might see if they witnessed a volcanic eruption. So in today's uh, reading, we'll be reading about the accounts of a 17-year-old who saw Vesuvius erupt, and I want you to use your imagination to come up with a short one to two paragraph short story of what you might see if you were to witness a volcanic eruption, okay? So this is again in our Unit 6 Geology, The Changing Earth Reader. We are on page 100 of our reader. Read along with me as I, I tell the tale of the violent Vesuvius. Mount Vesuvius looms above the Bay of Naples on Italy's west coast. Vesuvius is one of several Italian volcanoes that formed where two tectonic plates are slowly colliding. As one plate creeps beneath the other, magma rises up through cracks in Earth's crust. Over time, erupting magma has created Vesuvius and its volcanic neighbors. Many volcanologists or volcano scientists consider Vesuvius one of the world's most dangerous volcanoes. Why? Vesuvius has been one of Europe's most active volcanoes. It is within a few miles of several large Italian cities. A major eruption could threaten the lives of at least 3 million people. Scientists monitor Vesuvius very closely. They have placed dozens of sensors on the sides of the mountain. If you hiked to the crater on Vesuvius's top, you would see some of these sensors along the trail. The sensors record the mountain's slightest movement. Any unusual shaking can be a sign that an eruption is coming. The sensors also record information about hot gases rising from the volcano's crater. A change in these gases is also a sign of trouble. Here's an artist's rendering of what Vesuvius looked like when it erupted. Page 102. Scientists analyze sensor data over 24 hours each day. They issue a warning if the data suggests an eruption is brewing. When this happens, people living around the Bay of Naples are urged to evacuate. Scientists worry, however, that there might not be enough time for thousands of people to get a safe distance away from the volcano. Vesuvius has a history of erupting very suddenly. Vesuvius's last eruption occurred in 1944. For ne nearly two weeks, the volcano released billowing clouds of ash and gas. Fountains of lava shot up from the volcano's crater. Yet this eruption was minor compared to the eruption in 79 CE. It was the largest, most devastating Vesuvius eruption in recorded history. Millions of tons of hot ash and volcanic rock buried several ancient Roman towns at the volcano's base. As many as 16,000 people died. The 79 CE eruption of Vesuvius happened almost 2,000 years ago. Yet we know a great deal about it because of evidence left behind. Part of the evidence is an eyewitness account. A 17-year-old Roman known as Pliny the, the Younger lived through the disaster and wrote about it in a letter. Page 103, Eyewitness to Disaster. In the summer of 79 CE, Pliny and his mother were staying with his uncle. They lived in Mycenaeum, a town at the northern edge of the Bay of Naples. Mycenaeum was about 20 miles from Vesuvius. They could see Vesuvius across the bay. On an August afternoon, Pliny's mother noticed a strange cloud forming across the bay. Pliny described it in his letter. The cloud was raising from a mountain that we later learned was Vesuvius. Its shape was a pine tree. It rose into the sky on a trunk that seemed to have branches. 
What Pelnian was and his mother saw was the first stage of Vesuvius' eruption. Hot gas from deep inside the volcano had erupted, sending a gigantic column of ash and volcanic rock blasting up into the air. At its top, the cloud was spreading outward. It created a shape like a mushroom or an umbrella, or in Pilney's imagination, an Italian pine tree. Page 104. While his uncle sailed across the bay to investigate, Pilney stayed behind with his mother. Earthquakes shook the ground again and again. Ash and smoke filled the air. By morning, the sky was still dark. The air was so thick with volcanic ash that sunlight was blocked. Ash fell like snow from the sky. Plilney and his mother decided to head for the hills above Mycenaeum. They were joined by a crowd of panicked, terrified people from the town. From the hillside above the town, Plilney looked back across the bay toward Vesuvius. The towering pine tree shaped cloud above the volcano was still there, but had turned black. Lightning and sheets of orange flame flickered inside it. Then as Plumney watched, the gigantic cloud seemed to collapse. It fell from the sky and swept down the side of the volcano. Part of it surged out over the water of the bay and rolled toward them. Plumney grabbed his mother's hand and tugged her farther up the hillside, he wrote. A dense cloud came up behind us. It spread over the earth. Have you ever been in a room with no windows when the lights went out? That is how Plumley described the darkness. He and his mother crouched down, afraid to move because they couldn't see anything at all. He described the scene. Ashes began to fall again, this time in heavy showers. We shook them off, otherwise we would have been buried beneath them. Time dragged. Plumley was sure he was going to die. Then gradually, the darkness lifted. The ash fall slowed and eventually stopped. He saw that everything around him was covered in drifts of volcanic ash. He was sure the worst was over. A few days later, Plumley and his mother learned that his uncle was dead. He had died trying to help evacuate people from Pompeii, a nearby city. What about the towns around the bottom of the volcano? Pompeii and other towns at the volcano's base were gone completely buried under volcanic ash and rock. Page 106, Buried Evidence. Plony's letter gave scientists important clues about Vesuvius's eruption in 79 CE. The buried towns, and in particular Pompeii, provided even more information. It took hundreds of years, however, to unearth them. In 1748, people looking for Roman artifacts began digging near what had been Pompeii. As shovels cut into the soft volcanic rock, the diggers discovered that volcanic ash had preserved Pompeii. Buildings were still standing. Streets were still littered with objects people had dropped as they tried to escape. Inside homes, loaves of bread and food inside clay jars were still recognizable. The remains of some living things were also eerily recognizable. As the volcanic clouds swept down from Vesuvius, hot volcanic ash covered people and animals in seconds. They were entombed where they had fallen. Excavations continue at Pompeii. Herculeum, another town buried by Vesuvius in 79 CE, has also been uncovered. Workers have restored many of the houses, temples, and streets in this, these towns. They have cleaned and repaired paintings, sculptures, and mosaics. If you visit Pompeii and Herculeum, you can walk down ancient Roman streets that look very much like they did the day before the volcanic disaster. You can see where children your age played games, ate their meals, and slept. You can look out ancient windows and see Vesuvius still active, high above the towns. Details of the disaster. Scientists have pieced together a detailed account of the event. When Vesuvius erupted, it created the enormous cloud that Pilney saw. Hot volcanic material rained down from this cloud onto Pompeii and other nearby towns. Hot ash fell and accumulated into piles on the ground. Yet most people living in the towns at the volcano's base apparently survived the ashfall. 
Some fled on foot or in boots. Most of the people stayed and returned to their homes. Scientists suspect that they thought the worst was over. They were wrong. The towering cloud that hung above Vesuvius collapsed. Pilney witnessed it from his position across the bay. As millions of tons of hot volcanic materials dropped toward Earth, they gained speed, creating what scientists call pyroclastic flows. A pyroclastic flow is a sort of avalanche of intensely hot ash, rock fragments, and volcanic gas. It rolls down the side of a volcano as fast as a speeding train. When Vesuvius's py pyroclastic flows hit Pompeii and Herculeum, there was no time for people to react. In seconds, these volcanic avalanches swallowed up everything in their path. They, they preserve a moment in time. It was a terrifying moment for the town's inhabitants, but for us, it is a unique glimpse into a world long ago. Here's what Pompeii looks like after its excavations. Some of the walls and roads still visible after everything was cleared. Page 109, Plinian eruptions. The most powerful volcanic eruptions produce an enormous cloud of ash, bits of rock, and toxic gas. The cloud shoots skyward at hundreds of feet per second. This eruption column, as scientists call it, can soar several dozen miles into the air. At the top of this rising column, the cloud spreads outward. Pliny described the shape very well. Volcanologists call eruptions that produce such clouds Plinian eruptions in his honor. Other Plinian eruptions include Mount St. Helens in the state of Washington in 1980 and Indonesia's Mount Penta Penatubo in 1991. Okay, so that will wrap it up for today's reading. Again, your objective for this is to write a short one to two paragraph short story of what you might see if you were to have witnessed a volcanic eruption. Thank you for your time. Uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.